a weird blip from radar. An altitude 10,000 feet. Speed Mach 32.5. It's wavering. It's pitching straight down now. What's the range, Lee? Three miles. 16 degrees off our port bow now. The blip's gone. Must have crashed into the ocean. We're in for a nasty jump. All hands, stand by for severe shock wave. All right, brace yourselves. Here it comes. Damage control report. Rough, sir, but not enough to do us any real damage. All hands, secure stations. Engine room, full power. Change azimuth heading 16 degrees to port. Aye, sir. Say anything, Lee? No, nothing. Yes. Low tanks. All engines stop. Ready, surface rescue party. Aye, sir. Don't sound anything else? No wreckage. Let's see if that man on the raft can give us any answers. There are no other survivors. None. And nothing else, sir. Just this her lap bag. Uh -huh. Stow that in one of the lockers for now. Aye, sir. He swallowed quite a bit of the Indian Ocean, but he'll be all right. Good. I'll be in the control room. Uh, let me know when he comes to. He uh, might have seen something that'll interest us. <laughs> Tell you, sir. That's why I called you. We found him just like this. You're notified sick day. Aye, right, sir. No marks of any kind, no signs of violence. Looks like he just keeled over. But there has to be a reason. Toys. Watch out for the... Watch out for the toys. What did he say? Probably irrational. His pulse is fairly strong, but very erratic. Which means... I don't know. First thing is to get him to sick bay. Got it. Got to watch out for the toys. Admiral, large object, two miles dead ahead, at 40 fathoms. That has to be what hit the water. It hit the ocean with an awful wallop. Should have been broken up completely. 
but it's just floating out there as smooth as a new doorknob. Chief. Sir. Can you get a reading on the spectral analyzer? We programmed through the entire atomic range. Nothing. Then we have no way of knowing what we're up against. Let's approach this thing with a little caution. Uh, all right. Meanwhile, I'll uh, try to have a talk with that man we pulled out of the water. His name is Sam Burke, and he's a very lucky man. He's almost as good as new. I never felt better in my life. Howdy, Admiral. It's a good thing you came along, or I'd have been a goner for sure. I want to thank you. Oh, it's nice to know you, Burke. If you don't mind, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Anything, Admiral. Anything at all. If you'll excuse me, I'll get back to uh, Kowalski. Oh, how is he? No change. He's still incoherent, still mumbling about toys. No, sir, Admiral. I've been knocking around these islands for 20 years, and I ain't never seen anything like it before. Well, just what did you see? Well, I, I didn't see very much. I didn't even have time to be scared. I, uh, I heard this crazy whining noise sudden-like, and, and then got a glimpse of what was doing it. Up in the sky it was, bright and, and fast, and moving around like somebody was driving it. And uh, well, then it hit the water like you can't believe, about a thousand yards from my ship. Well, that's all I remember till I woke up here and found your good doctor bending over me. Uh, you were alone. Yeah, yeah. Well, except for a few rats in the bilge. Don't think I ain't grateful to be alive, Admiral, but, well, it, it is kind of hard thinking that every blessed thing I own went down with my ship. Well, not quite. We uh, found a burlap bag while my men put it away for you. Of all the things to save. Just a lot of cheap stuff I picked up to trade with the natives. Well, I'll see that you're assigned a cabin. Oh, uh, by the way, we got a fix on that object that sank your boat. I'm going to have a look at it now. Hey, can I see it, too? That thing sank my ship, and I got a score to settle with it. All right, Mr. Burke, come along. It hasn't budged. Not so much as an inch. Hey, sir. This is Sam Burke. He sighted that thing, whatever it was. Not very much, but enough to suggest it could be the work of intelligent creatures. Well, I, I sure figured something was steering it. And you can bet your bottom dollar it was like no airplane you ever seen. It might have come from outer space. Nothing on Earth could have maneuvered at that speed. Or survived the tremendous impact it made when it hit the water. Right. Well, let's go down and have a look at it. I right, get the remote cameras ready and the emission detector. Let's see if there's any possible radiation. Come with me, Mr. Burke. Maybe we can spot it from the observation towers. Engine room, dead slow. Take it down to 30 fathoms. Dead slow, down 30 fathoms. Aye, sir. toys. Reading. That thing up ahead is radiating power. Yes. It's on an unusual frequency. Well, not only that, it's been tracking us, too, like some kind of electronic probe. I'm going to hold here, Admiral. At least until we investigate further. Why? That object seems to be tracking our course. Now, what did I tell you, Admiral? There's just got to be something alive in there to do that. All right, we better hold. All stop. Maintain neutral buoyancy. Neutral buoyancy. Aye, sir. If there is intelligent life aboard, I, uh, I wonder what it's like. Well, I can tell you one thing, Admiral. Whatever that thing is that smashed my ship won't have no intelligence when I get through with it. <laughs> we may be too far out to get a good look at it. Well, before we get any closer, I better check it out. Well, why waste your time, Captain? I already told you it ain't safe. Look what it done to me. Say, you, uh, you got a mighty powerful craft here, what I seen of it. 
I say, let's move in and blast him good. Well, if it turns out to be hostile, Mr. Burke, we better stay out of range. Let's see if the cameras can pick it up. Activate nose and sail cameras. Aye, aye, sir. That's it. That's the thing I saw that sunk my ship. Sparks, there's some kind of an unidentified craft dead ahead. Try to establish radio contact. I'll be right there. Aye, sir. Anything, Sparks? I've just locked onto something, Admiral. The directional antenna's pointed right at that thing. It's got to be coming from it. Well, the sound is garbled. We should be closer, much closer. I believe we're getting a garbled signal from that object. What do you think about moving a little closer? It's uh, too risky, Admiral. We haven't finished checking it out yet. We're getting a fluctuation in the automatic speed control now. Better get a replacement cartridge from stores. Force ray is pulling us toward it. How are we holding? Afraid not. That thing has more muscle than we've got. We've slowed down, all right, but we're still being dragged toward it. Uh, stand by to open collision screen. All right, sir. No more than three inches. All right. Admiral, Mr. Brick, you better turn your backs. I'm going to try to see where that force field's coming from. force field itself. Well, maybe we can neutralize it with our own force field. Energize the magnetic force field. Aye, sir. That did it, sir. We're holding. We're going to breathe it, but that's about all. Our full reverse thrust and the force field are exactly matching the power of their force ray. Well, now, I'd say that ain't exactly good enough, Admiral. Ain't you got any torpedoes or bombs aboard this craft? Yes, yes, we have, Mr. Burke, but we can't fire them now without getting the backlash of the explosion. First we're too far, then we're too close. I'd like to get my hands on them critters in that thing. I bet I could put an end to this. I'm afraid it's going to take a little bit more than that, Mr. Burke. Lee, we'd better see how we're standing the stress. Right, sir. Terrific strain. Assign every available man to damage control parties. Aye, sir. 
We can't take much of this without springing leaks. Well, let's hope that's all that happens. We're exceeding stress beyond design limitations. A little more I could tear sieve you apart. The flying sub has more power for its size and weight than sieve you. <laughs> well, it's marginal, but I believe it can escape that force ray. You mean use the flying sub as a decoy? That's right, I'll be flying out in it. If they turn the beam on me, it'll give you a chance to get CV out of range. That's if you can escape the force ray yourself. Damage control, over here! Just prepare the flying stuff for immediate launch. Let me assign a man to go with you. Oh, you'll need every man you've got to control the situation here. Yes, but if you lose power, you might need help with manual controls. So well, how about me? Now, I, I don't know nothing about these fancy damn submarines, but I... Well, I got a couple of strong arms, and besides, I got a score to settle with them monkeys, or whatever they are. All right, Mr. Burke. Green light on all systems, Admiral. Good. Let's go. See you, you'll be in the glare of that force ray. All instrumentation gray and ready for launch. Roger. Prepared for launch. Mr. Burke? I'm as ready as I'll ever be. I, I ain't used to these contraptions. Well, you soon will be. Launch. There, Admiral. Kind of locked in with that light on the sea view. Yeah. You think maybe they ain't seen us yet? Either that or they're not being fooled by a maneuver. I'm going in closer. This is the interim, Skipper. Urgent. Go ahead. This tug of war is making our reactors overheat. You've got to hold full reverse. We're just barely offsetting the force ray. We sprung a steam leak here, Skipper. Send the damage control party. All right, you'll have them. Damage control, lay aft to the engine room on the double. Aye, aye, sir. Flying sub to see you. You read me, Lee. We read you, Admiral. No luck yet, and I don't dare get any closer. I'm going to approach from the side on the chance they won't see me, and I'll try to hit them with a the laser beam. All right, Admiral. Lee, it worked. They turned the beam on me. Now get the sea view out of there. It didn't work, Admiral. They turned another ray on you. We're, we're trapped. They got us now, too. But yet we may have more power than they do. He's making it back, Chip. Make sure the mooring locks are open for him. It's gonna crash right into that thing. They haven't got a chance. It is gone. It's not gone, Chip. It passed right through the structure of that thing. Admiral. Admiral, do you read me? Come in. Skipper, that's all. It's shooting the reactor. 
reactor circuits. They'll reach critical mass. They're, up, they're already badly overheated. Finding anything? No, sir. It just stopped. Shook us up quite a bit, though. It's uh, a lot of damage. Now keep the repair crews at it. They can't let up. And there's more coming. If we can't figure out a way to kill that force ray. Enter room, Skipper. I've managed to stabilize the reactors, but I can't control the overheating. How long will it hold? At full reverse thrust, 30 minutes, maybe, if we're lucky. If not, they can blow any time. Without the engines, a magnetic force shield won't be enough. We'll be dragged into that thing out there. We have to pull loose and get away if we want to rescue the Admiral. Aye, aye, sir. Something tells me we, we bit off more than we can chew, Admiral. No doors, no nothing, but we went right through the hull of this contraption. Where are we, anyway? Some kind of an airlock. Whoever or whatever they are, They've discovered the, the secret of molecular solubility. Well, the test the outside atmosphere. Shows we can open the hatch. There's breathable air out there, but it's it's cold. Very cold. Well, you 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 ain't figuring on getting out. Well, we can't just sit here. I'm going out to have a look around. See if we can communicate somehow. You know what? I, uh, I thought I wanted to have it out with these rascals, but uh, <laughs> I guess I was just spouting off. How can you fight something like this? Maybe, maybe I better just stay here on board and kind of guard things in case they try to pull something. You can do more than that. You can try to splice the control kit. If it hadn't snapped, we wouldn't be here. We're gonna need it if we get a chance to escape. Huh? Okay. together peacefully. You need not fear. You need not fear, Admiral Nelson. No harm will befall you. You know who I am. We on this ship know everything. Well, I'm listening. This spacecraft was forced down when its nuclear fuel became contaminated and had to be jettisoned. We have none left. Then your radiation detectors told you that sea view is nuclear power. Correct, Admiral. That is why we turned the force ray on you. All we want is a portion of your nuclear fuel. If you will give it to us, you will be allowed to go in peace. That sounds reasonable enough. 
We are reasonable beings, Admiral. We wish you no harm. But we will destroy you if we have to. To obtain the fuel. I'd have to return to see you. You will be allowed to go if I have your word that you will do as we request. In return to... Do I have your word that you'll release us when I give you the fuel? You have. Go in peace. Liz Nelson. For an Earthling, he seems to be most intelligent. Before we release him, do you think he really believed our story of needing nuclear fuel? Why not? To him, nuclear engines are the most advanced form of controlled energy. How could he guess that our engines use the metal titanium? The galaxy gods have smiled on us. Nowhere else on this burning planet could we have found such a ready supply of pure titanium as in that submarine. Even so, the hull of the sea view contains barely enough metal to replenish our supply. Our atomic reducers will disintegrate the sea view as soon as it comes alongside. Is that other creature, Burke, completed the repairs? He has. Then release Nelson. Hey, Admiral, I was getting worried about you. Did you, did you find out anything? There's no time for that now, Burke. We're being released. You got that cable fixed, we can get back to see you. Hey, that's great. Everything's gonna be okay, huh? Just give me a couple of more minutes. I'll have this cable good as new. You're sure this was making all that noise? I know it was, Skipper. The minute I found it in here and broke it up with that bar, the sound was gone. How could such a little toy cause such damage? You know, I warned you about those things, sir. I told you they were dangerous. I still don't understand how I could do all those things. Maybe that guy we pulled out of the ocean could tell us. They belong to him. Yes, but unfortunately, he's in the flying sub with the Admiral right now. We'll question him when he comes back. And meanwhile, though, uh, you better get a check out from the doctor. You know, it's not me I'm worried about, sir. But if that guy is out in the flying sub with the Admiral, maybe the Admiral's the one we got to be concerned about. I was thinking the same thing. Carry on. No word from the Admiral? Nothing, sir. Skipper, we're springing more leaks all the time and the repair parties can't keep up with them. Look, load all the forward torpedo tubes with unarmed missiles. We'll fire them simultaneously. Now, the combined recoil might give us enough backward thrust to spring us loose from that. That's, That's a good right. idea. Oh, sir, what about the Admiral? Well, if we can get beyond the range of that force ray, we might be able to help him. I, I saw have the forward torpedo tubes loaded immediately. All right. All four tubes ready to load, Skipper. Full propellant charge. All right, top them off with an extra 4,000 PSI. When they let go, they're going to slap us real hard. Well, you better hope they do. It's our only chance to break loose. Number five bulkhead's beyond stress limits. If it goes, we'll be flooded. All hands. In 30 seconds, we're going to fire all forward torpedo tubes simultaneously. Now, if you've ever been kicked by a shotgun, you'll know what's going to happen. All right, Chief. Start the countdown. Set for, uh, 20 seconds. All right, sir. You know, those fish are going to pack a wallop even without the warheads. At this range, they might plow right on that thing out there, and Admiral Lusson is still... Don't you think I haven't thought about that? I've got your orders. That's all we can do. I ask you. All four torpedo tubes and automatic countdown. 20 seconds. Fifteen seconds and counting. Twelve. Eleven. Ten. The Admiral's coming back. We smashed by those torpedoes. Chief, stop the countdown. Missile room, abort firing. Missile room, abort firing. Admiral, veer off. Veer off, do you read me, Admiral? Veer off. His radio's dead. He can't hear you. Skipper, 
those torpedoes didn't fire. What are you talking about? Well, look for yourself, sir. The torpedoes are still in their tubes. The propeller fuel exploded, but they never moved out. I can understand malfunction in one tube, but it makes sense all six malfunctioned. Well, whatever happened, the fact that they didn't fire saved the Admiral's life. Now, find out what went wrong. Fix it. As soon as the Admiral's aboard, we'll try again. Aye, aye, sir. Flag sub approaching berthing area, Captain. Got it, Sparks. Let's see what he's got to report. Are you all right? The matter is speaking, it's a rather incredible experience, but it can wait. What's going on? Now, we've been severely damaged. It was the pounding that did it. The pounding? It's like a giant being in a huge kill room. Is that what you find out what it was? Yes, I think so. Kowalski found this and smashed it. It's a toy driller. Kowalski kept mumbling about toys. I, uh, I think Mr. Burke can explain a few things. What do you mean, explain? That's, that's just one of them crazy toys I picked up in Hong Kong to trade with the natives. I got six of them. But what about this? This isn't a part of any toy. It looks like some kind of a control device. Now, somehow, before we picked you up, those aliens found your toys and equipped them with these devices. We either five of these loose on the ship. We have to find them and destroy them immediately. Master at Arms, search the ship for toys. Any toys you find, destroy them. I want guards placed at all strategic points throughout the ship. Aye, sir. Skipper, this is the missile room. The torpedo tubes didn't malfunction. It was the master control was sabotaged. The damage beyond repair. Do what you can. Then report up here. Aye, sir. Well, there goes the only chance to break loose from that force ray. Number three all just ruptured. It's sealed off, but it's flooded. We're beginning to break up. It's no good, Admiral. You gotta do like them things said. You gotta stop the engines and let them have that nuclear fuel. Uh, how, how did you know that? I didn't tell you anything. You know what? That the aliens demanded our nuclear fuel. Look, Admiral, they grabbed me. They'd have thrown me back in the ground when they first sunk my ship if I hadn't promised to help them. Why didn't you tell us when we first rescued you? I knew you didn't have a chance against them things. They said they'd let me live if I played it their way, and they promised not to hurt nobody. If we ever get out of this, I'm going to shake the truth out of you. Right now, I want to know only one thing. What are they really after? That's all I know, Admiral, so help me. Chip, lock him up. It looks as though they meant to destroy us all the time. But why? Obviously, they want something more than the nuclear fuel. Well, whatever it is, it looks like they've got it. Our only chance was to break loose with a recoil from the forward tubes. Now that's out. Well, don't give up. There may be a lot of way, but I'll, I'll need about ten minutes. You might as well ask for a miracle, the way things are going. Only a prayer could hold a ship together that long. Well, try a prayer. All right, that's good, that's good. Uh, I can finish off here. You can end the escape hatch and have my scuba gear ready. You're not gonna go out there with these, are you, sir? With the torpedo tube sabotage, it's the only way I can get this packet out to the alien ship. Now, look, on the double. I shall. No, sir, but they're ready in the missile room. Yes, so am I. Fifty paramagnesium flares set to ignite simultaneously. At 50,000 BTUs apiece, that's an awful lot of heat energy. I just hope it's enough that I can attach it to that ship before the sea view breaks up. All right, let's go. Chief, I told you to have the scuba gear ready for me. That's uh, what he told me, but I just saved three minutes by being ready to go. Now, all I need to know is your plan. Well, the one thing I found out about these aliens, they live in a sub-zero environment. We might be able to destroy them if we can raise the temperature beyond survival limits. Then this heat packet might do it. Now, if I can attach this to the side of their ship, it just might work. Huh? All right. Wish me luck. Well, you'll need more than that. If that packet goes before you can make it back, you'll get caught in the heat. You've got...
This is the engine room, Admiral. The skipper had better make it fast. The reactors have reached critical mass. I don't know what's holding them together. Well, make them hold together. It will last at least another 10 minutes. Aye, aye, sir. Please almost reach the ship. Approaching the alien ship from the flank. So far, no reaction from it. You have less than 10 minutes to attach the heat pack and get back here. Will do. As soon as you've attached the packet, activate the timer. You have five minutes to get back aboard. They've sent out divers. Drop the net and destroy them. Yes, sir.
is the missile room. Captain Crane's back on board. Well, get him up here when he's out of scuba gear. Aye, sir. The engines have shut down. We're being drawn into that thing out there. Thanks. It slowed us down, but not enough. The heat pack's due to go any second. That thing out there, it's gone. The heat pack worked. Admiral? Sam Burke's down here in the missile room. I don't know what he's up to, but he says that you and Chip had better get down here on the double. Or he'll destroy the sea view. Right there. Now, I'm going to give it to you straight, Admiral. Now, you maybe got rid of that hunk of tin or whatever it was come down from outer space, but you ain't out of your troubles by a long shot. No siree. Oh, I don't know, Mr. Burke. I think we're in pretty good shape. You're just whittling an iron tie rod with a rusty old kitchen knife, Admiral. There's only one man can get you out of this. That's me, Sam Burke. Now, you listen to me or I'll take off and let you drown in this old gaboon of a sub. Oh, let me bellow one, Admiral. Easy, Chief. He can't talk to you that way. Just one chop. One little chop to the whiskers, huh? I said easy. Please. You were talking about those toys, weren't you? You got it, Admiral. Them toys are still on board. And still programmed to destroy us. That's right. All of you. But not me. They've been learning to figure me as a friend. I'm the only one can stop them. So you better listen to me. And how about making a deal? No, no deals. You got nothing to lose, Admiral. I can save you. Haven't they found any of those toys yet? You're too late, Admiral. Don't move. Sorry, Admiral. I thought maybe I could get you out of this mess, but it wasn't no good. They'd have killed me, so I, I couldn't help myself. You, you knew the toys were going to attack. Sure. They was programmed to take over your sub. There was nothing I could do but maybe scare you off the sub so you wouldn't get hurt none. Oh, that's okay, but Everything worked out just fine. Yeah. Yeah, for everybody but me, I guess. Oh, you're going to be all right. A hard-nosed old windbag like you doesn't get off that easy. I'm ordering you a long rest in sick bay before you go back to the islands. Yeah, I'm being soft-hearted like I am. I uh, might even bring you a present. I think we'll all chip in on that. Okay, that's a deal. Only, only one thing. No, no wind-up toys, eh? Get him to sit there. <laughs> aye, aye, sir. Come on. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Lee. Let's head for home. 